on the faculty of one university is one communist too many. One communist among the Amer American advisors at Yalta was one communist too many. Joseph R. McCarthy liked to call himself Tail Gunner Joe, although he had only sat behind a tail gun as a publicity stunt. For four brutal years, the junior senator from Wisconsin reigned as the country's self-appointed commie hunter supreme. Joe McCarthy was a black-jowled, scowling, kind of sinister-looking person with a five o'clock shadow and a lumbering gait. And yet those who got to know him found him to be gregarious. He had the sort of the appeal of a tramp dog wagging its tail. Joe McCarthy had little to show for his first four years in Washington. A group of newspaper correspondents named him the worst member of the United States Senate. With re-election approaching, he was a candidate desperate for an issue. On February 9, 1950, McCarthy arrived in Wheeling, West Virginia to give a Lincoln Day speech to the local Republican Women's Club. He told his audience that there were 205 communists in the State Department controlling American foreign policy. It was a blatant lie. Willard Edwards of the Chicago Tribune later said it was really a throwaway because if McCarthy had thought it was a, going to be a big speech, A, he wouldn't have given it in, we, in Wheeling, West Virginia, and B, he would have brought a bunch of reporters down who were bright-wing reporters who were pals of his. So uh, it, was, uh, it was really a throwaway, but there was the charge. The senator's accusations were published by newspapers across the country. McCarthy, elated by the attention, continued his speaking tour in Reno, Nevada, where Frank McCulloch, a young reporter for the Reno Gazette, was sent to meet him. Came down off the plane, made clear that he'd known us for 50 years. We walked away from the plane with his arms around both our shoulders. We walked down a Reno street, with, again, with his arm about our shoulders. And he discovered in the process of that walk that I'd been a Marine, and that delighted him, and we became even closer buddies. Instinctively, socially, for a U.S. Senator to treat a, a Bush League reporter like that is, is, is not, it isn't within the framework and it, it made me very uneasy. McCarthy was as easy with journalists as he was loose with the truth. In a subsequent radio interview, the number of communists in the State Department dwindled from 205 to 57. We had uh, the message from AP in which I think they quoted him as saying that he had in his hand a list of 205, and the story said communists, flatly, unequivocally. We began to try to examine him about, uh, or question him, about why did you say 205 before and 57 now? I'll be honest with you, I don't remember what the answer was. It was a long argument, and we didn't get anywhere with it. And finally, it got to the point where at the end we were challenged and produced this list of 57. Well, uh, we went through a great routine. He looked through his pockets, he looked, through, he looked in his briefcase, and he finally pronounced he'd lost it. I remember when he came back from that Wheeling, West Virginia speech, he called me in and said, Jack, I think I've hit the jackpot. But I don't really have much. Can you help me? Well, I was anti-communist, and he was my friend. And I said, sure, I'll help you. I'll see if we've got anything in the files. And I searched the files, and I found one case that had been reported to us of a possible communist in the State Department, a man rather high in the State Department. And I turned the raw filage over to Joe McCarthy, and I said, you want to check this guy out? Maybe you've got something here, but check it out very carefully. This is the raw file. Uh, he read it verbatim on the Senate floor not long afterwards, and that's the last time I had anything to do with Joe McCarthy. To Joe McCarthy, hunting communists was little more than a game, a game in which he was the big winner. Around Washington, rumors of his drinking and gambling went unreported. I don't think this is an exaggeration. I think in probably, certainly no more than an hour, maybe an hour and a half, we had eight drinks. 
eight or nine drinks. I could hardly get up from the table. And then everybody drank the same. All three of us drank bourbon and soda. And uh, we all drank the same thing. I can't remember who paid the bill either. I suspect we did, but I don't remember. <laughs> The press of the day had one weakness that Joe McCarthy understood all too well. Their standards required them to be objective, to report exactly what was said, even if it was unsubstantiated. He understood also another maybe more important point, that denials are never as dramatic as charges, and they're always 24 to 48 hours behind. The consequence was day after day, week after week, into the years that the charges were A1, the denials were B7. And he understood that, and he played it to the hill. I remember Mac that McCarthy was kind of a bully who was on your side if you were in the press. He knew the deadlines of the wire services. He knew the deadlines for all the major newspapers. He knew uh, how photographers could take their pictures. And he knew that we had these big television cameras, film cameras, that couldn't stop when uh, very easily. So he said something that would be just unheard of today. He said, boys, when I get to the important part, I'll rap on the side of the podium or lectern. And he did, and all the cameras were turned on, and they recorded just what Senator McCarthy wanted recorded, and then they turned off, and the film went back and was put on the air that night. A Senate subcommittee investigates sensational charges by Senator Joseph McCarthy. He Joe McCarthy couldn't have found a communist on May Day in Red Square in Moscow in a review held by Joe Stalin, which was true. He didn't have the faintest idea what a communist and didn't care. You know, that, that, that's the most incredible thing about that man. He really, he had the mind of a man, he had the body of a man, but he had the soul of a little tiny child pulling the wings off a butterfly. None of this was serious to him. One of the accused is John Stewart Service, now summoned home, and concerning whom Senator McCarthy says, Mr. Chairman, today this man, John S. Service, is a ranking officer in the policy-making group of untouchables on duty. One of McCarthy's targets was John Service, a promising young diplomat who had served in the Far East. When Mao Zedong's communist armies conquered China, service reported that Mao posed no threat to the United States. To McCarthy, that meant that service was a communist. When you have a weak case, you've got to use weak kinds of evidence like guilt by association. You saw Owen Lattimore at a 4th of July reception at the American Embassy in Tokyo in 1935. What did he say? And so I mean, you, you can't prove that you're not something sometimes. It's, it's very difficult. At that time, with all the publicity, I had all sorts of trouble. I wanted to get uh, term life insurance. No thanks. They wouldn't do it. As a man said to me, how do we know you're not going to jump out a window? Some other people had. Uh, we rented an apartment in New York and then found uh, that the uh, owner changed his mind. He wouldn't lease to us. While others suffered under his attack, McCarthy continued to bask in the limelight. At the entrance of the uh, committee room, there were two doors. And just as we got outside, there was, there was a photographer. He said, oh, Mr. Service, stand right there. I want to get another picture. And, and I was fed up. I mean, the pictures were, were just an awful nuisance during the hearing. They were all around in front of you and shooting up at you at the worst possible angles and this and that. And I said to hell with it, you've got hundreds of pictures. And my lawyer said, Jack, Jack, take it easy, the guy, so he might even get a good picture and we got to be nice to him. So I stood there, and just as I stood there, a door flung open, and behind it was, was Senator McCarthy. The great Senator of the United States had put this photographer up to this cheap little silly trick so he could get a picture of him and me standing by side by side. That's not, you're not serious when you're engaged in stuff like that. What was a joke for Joe McCarthy was deadly serious for John Service. Despite McCarthy's failure to prove any of his charges, Service's career was destroyed. One of the country's most knowledgeable experts on China spent his last days in the Foreign Service stamping passports in Liverpool, England. <laughs>